Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review, and I'm here today to talk to you about Hulu's The Hardy Boys Season 2, Episode 1, Disappearance. So it's been about a year and a half since the first season came out. And at first, like, I kind of thought this show wasn't going to get renewed for a second season, only because it took nearly about six, eight months just for the show to get renewed. And when it did get renewed, it quietly got renewed. And so you had to like check about it like on Wikipedia and stuff because nobody was really talking about it. And then, so I was wondering, okay, it got renewed. I know it's coming out in 2022. So when exactly is it coming out? And then so about, oh, four days ago, I just decided to look at it and they, they had like a trailer that had dropped. And I'm just and the trailer had just dropped a few days before I had a look. I'm just like, wow, they're really not advertising this like at all. Not even on Hulu and stuff. And so the trailer looked pretty interesting, pretty dark. And I'm just like, wow, I, I kind of can't wait to see this because it's weird. Because like the first season, I didn't particularly like all that much. I found it interesting, but it felt like it had a bit of a like a pacing problem and. It kind of dragged on for a little too long and stuff. And so, like, it came on today um, at 11 o'clock p.m. You know, I got to give it up to Hulu. Unlike all these other streaming sites, when their new stuff comes out, it comes out at 11 p.m. at night. Not 2 in the morning, not 3, none of that crap. And so, like... It's still, I think it's around like 10 or probably like 13 episodes or so. And I have to say, like, I still don't think it's as good as Nancy Drew. I know I've been ragging on Nancy Drew lately, but I'm still thinking about like season one of Nancy Drew and some of season two. And it still has kind of that boring factor to this show. And that's one thing I didn't like about the first season. It was just at times I felt a bit bored. However, now that I'm thinking about season one, their premiere episode of season one was a bit more interesting than this one. Now, when this thing starts off, it starts off pretty like spooky and interesting. It's a nice aesthetic to it. It's a nice cinematography to it. Um, they're trying to do it kind of like an old 70s, 80s, like horror movie or slasher movie and stuff and but when you watch this because it sets in the 80s it's set in the 80s but it doesn't necessarily feel too 80s like it feels 80s but it also feels 70s and so that's kind of cool i still like that i like how they use like old school music they don't use slang for some bizarre reason and so they still have that that nice amber type like filter to it to make you feel like you're in a different like setting. So that's really good. I still like that. Um, God, was not, but then I remember in the first season there was this vibe that it had. It wasn't just the clothes. It was like the boys riding their bikes in town because they're like teens, you know. Well. Frank is a teen and Joseph is like a kid. And so they were like riding their bikes in the town and it's bright and sunny. And they had a really cool vibe when they did that in the first season. However, things have now changed and everything. Frank now has a car. And not only does he have a car, but he has a nice car. I believe it's a Mustang and it's a nice one at that. And so it kind of sucks because it's kind of like, you know, I like that whole feel of them riding their bikes around town, not having to hop in like this um, hot rod of a type car and zooming around town, you know. And so they kind of, so that kind of takes it away from me. Now, I still feel like this has a pacing issue because it's too heavily dialogue. Like once something gets like intriguing in the beginning, then it's tons of dialogue with like family drama and teen drama and everyday school drama. And then they get back to the intriguing stuff. And then it's back to the heavy dialogue again. And you know how I feel about heavy dialogue. That's one reason why I'm done with the CW, <laughs> uh, the Arrowverse and stuff. I just can't take all that heavy dialogue crap no more. <laughs> And so this show is very, very, very heavy dialogue and stuff. 
and so that's kind of the problem I'm having with like the pacing. Now, all the characters from last season show up except for the, the bad girl. Um, she doesn't show up, or at least so far, not yet. Now, they did introduce a brand new character named Belinda. She is going to be the love interest of Chet. And so, for the most part, this is still pigging off back from last season. Um, so that's kind of cool, you know. Um, it, it's kind of cool in a way and kind of not. Like, I was kind of hoping they will go in a different direction. Kind of like the books and stuff, but they're still piggying back off certain things that happened last season. How Callie and Frank are a couple, how Chet doesn't necessarily like that. Um, the whole Biff and Joe type thing is starting to build slightly more. Um, and what's his name? Phil, you can still take him out the show and it won't really matter. <laughs> and um, their dad's there a lot more this time. So he's kind of getting into their business as they're trying to do their thing. And the whole MacGuffin of the eye, that is still very much a thing this season. So it's kind of interesting what's going on with that. I hope the pace builds up faster and they kind of explain. Um, so basically, this is what's happening in this season so far. Well, actually, this episode. Now, every episode dropped at the same time. So you can binge it if you want. I'm going to take my time. And so basically it starts off, and when I said before, like it starts off pretty cool. You get kind of this old school 70s slashery type vibe with the old video camera and stuff. And it's Phil, and he's recording like his friends and stuff because him and the AV club are about to head out into the woods and camp for some bizarre reason. And so, you know, some nice, like, banter between each other and stuff. And everybody's getting along for the most part. And they head out into, like, the woods, right? And so, there's a guy and a girl, Dennis and Lucy. They're dating. And Dennis wants the camera from Phil. Because uh, it's his turn to get it. Phil's reluctant, but, you know, he gives it up anyway. And then we see Lucy and we see Dennis head to a part where they have no business going, a gate, and they sneak in. Dennis wants to film something. What that something is, we don't know quite yet. Then all of a sudden, it cuts from that into this really spooky type thing. Dennis is running from for his life, and he does not have the camera no more. And he's just running, looking back and forth. It's night, and then he trips, and then all of a sudden, Something grabs and snatches him, like literally snatches him off frame, off screen and everything. So it's kind of like, dude, what is going on? You know what I'm saying? And so I'm like, could they be going to some type of like uh, a person? Is it like a demon? Like what's going on? You know? And then so like basically what's happening with Joe and Frank is like, oh, first I'm going to get into something Joe does. So, Remember Lucy I was talking about? Joe was checking her out. And Biff is not too happy. <laughs> See, the whole relationship with Biff and um, Joe is that, like, he's trying to help her find her biological father because she's, like, adopted and stuff. And she's just kind of like, leave me alone. I don't want to deal with that and stuff like that. So he's constantly bugging her. Now, she is kind of starting to like him a little bit more. Now, with Joe in this season, he cannot help but want to do detective type stuff. He wants to investigate everything. When he doesn't get to, he's irritated and stuff. And so he's looking for like a missing dog. And he's been taking, he has a camera now. Um, and he's been taking pictures of a lot of like weird stuff going around. And one of those things is a blue van that's constantly around like a certain neighborhood. So he wants to investigate, but he wants to do it with Frank. Frank is done with the whole detective thing. He has moved on. He has a girlfriend. He has a job. He doesn't care no more. And this is really irritating Joe to the point where they kind of get into it, you know? And so the um, next day at school, like, it turns out Dennis did not come back home. So the kids, they want to go investigate, but they all can't go. So Biff's all like, yo, my mom gets pissed when I like um, skip school, so let's do this thing. So it's Biff, it's Frank, um, 
Joe and Phil. And so Callie is doing something at school and Chet is in detention. And for some reason, he has a cast on his arm. Something happened to him the night before, but he's being very vague about it. It does irritate him every time he sees Callie and Frank kiss. And so he's in detention mingling with Belinda, the new girl. I don't know if she's from the books or not. I have to look that up. And so as the kids are like in the woods and everything, they're investigating, they see a shrine. So basically what it is is the AV is supposed to start recording stuff and documenting stuff, but Dennis is going to fake his documentary. And based it on this demon legend and everything, the bridge um, view like demon or something like that is called, no, um, bridge point demon. It's like this whole folklore type thing. Phil's all into it, he thinks it's real. And you know, like he thinks aliens are real and stuff like that. So while they're there and they're investigating, they see the shrine that what's his name had made up himself. Um, because they knew he was doing that because they talked to Lucy. She's being vague and don't want to talk to him. And she's all like, look, whatever it is he was recording, um, then that's where he'll be. So they find some old tapes of his and see that he's like faking stuff. This pisses off Phil big time. And so at some point in time, they run into a man named Matt. And Matt wants them to leave. He's talking about it's too dangerous out here. He's being creepy. And he's all like, Where your friend you're looking for, you ain't gonna be able to find him. And Frank's just kind of like, Well, how do you know it was a him? So they think he stole Dennis or something like that, or kidnapped him. So at some point in time, the rescue team finds them and the cops. And Biff's mom is pissed at everybody for skipping school and going in the woods where it's dangerous. Well, when they get home, boy, let me tell you, the dad is not happy. He shouts, he yells at them. He's finally being a parent to them. And so he grounds them for a long time and he takes Frank's car. Now, their aunt is still in the show, but she's barely in the first episode. Like, the amount of time she's in there is probably... 20 to 30 seconds like she's barely in this now ironically gloria the grandmother calls the house and she talks to franks and them dad and she's all like she's being sneaky vague from prison and stuff and she wants to talk to the dad about what don't know and so like I'm trying to think um yeah, I already mentioned how, like, what's the face has gotten to an argument because Frank is tired of this whole investigation stuff, but they want to know where Dennis is. So, anyway, we see Matt, and he's in, like, a mine shaft type thing and a lab, and it's the Cavern MacGuffin thing from last season. And so, there, it was the people who took the stuff last time. I thought they might have been FBI or CIA or something. But no, they're called something else that starts with an S. And so they have somebody in the room with a bag over their head. And something, oh crap, dude, they got Dennis. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so there's a woman in charge and she's not too friendly. And she has the MacGuffin, the eye. And so the next day at school the kids are still want to know what happened to dennis right now something odd is going on with frank when he is dreaming so this is something that's cool remember how i said it started off kind of like a horror movie well it started to start off more like a a messed up film so you see this distortion you see this film and everything distorted and then we see frank he's in some type of dream illusion and he's there with his mom and he's there with Joe and it's an old arcade game and so like he's playing it but then all of a sudden it says game over right and then you start hearing ding, 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 and it starts counting down like it's gonna explode and she tells him get out of here but she also tells him it's not a game it's a puzzle then he wakes up from the dream so it's kind of like dude what is going on with him now if you remember he touched the MacGuffin last season and so it left some residual something in him, but we don't know quite yet. So at some point in time, 
Um, what's his face? What's his face? What's his face? Joe is so pissed he sneaks out the house with Biff and Phil. They go back into the woods and they go there and then I think Frank shows up at some point. And so, oh, Frank's there and I think, um, yeah, Callie and what's his name? What's his name? Chet show up as well. So they all go together because, you know, they're like a team and stuff. And so... As they're there, they're looking around and they start and they find Dennis' hat and it's wet and it's near the water. So they figure he might have washed up around the stream. So, oh, wait, wait, wait. So, okay, first it wasn't the whole game. First it was just Phil, Biff, and Joe and they went there. But um as the others were talking they found out that they go into near the mine shaft and callie's and uh was, and they were all talking to like um the dude that um works at the diner the milkshake dude and who um frank works for right and he's all like oh there's swamp gas over there and callie's all like swamp gas is not cool like you can hallucinate and pass out so that will cause the others to go find them so when they're in like the mine shaft um they all pass out uh frank not frank not frank not frank joe biff and phil and before joe can pass out he sees a hallucination of the demon thing that phil is afraid of and as it's coming slowly towards him he passes out then he wakes up and he's there with chat callie and frank and so then they start walking and that's when they find a hat in the water and they figure it washed up on stream as they follow it they find dennis and he's alive so then all of a sudden it goes back to that uh, mine shaft lab and that person is still there with a bag over their head so if it's not dennis who is it Oh, uh, it's J.B. Cox, the weird grown man who likes to hang out with Joe, who is a kid. Which, by the way, this time, Joe got tall. He's about as tall as Frank. He's about an, um, a full inch, like, shorter than him. And Biff is getting a little tall, too. And so, J J.B., they want to know about the MacGuffin and everything and it's fully assembled now and he's all like you know I've seen it but I haven't seen it like assembled and stuff so they want to know everything he knows right and so while Dennis is in the hospital and everything you know they start asking him a couple of questions but the cop won't really let them and so Frank and them daddy's all like you know what you're still grounded, but if y'all didn't go walking around the woods, you never found Dennis. So he gives Frank back the keys to his car. And as they're in their room, of course, JB does what he does always, sneak into their room. And he's all like, give me the eye. And they're all like, dude, what are you talking about? Now, his face is bashed in a big black eye. And he's all, they're all like, we don't know what you're talking about. He's all like, you swap the um eye for a fake one give me the real one and everything um from when the thing was in the mine shaft last season um towards the big cliffhanger type thing and now like dude we don't know what you're talking about we didn't swap nothing if it's there then it's down in the rubble he's like no i just came from there and stuff and the one um the, the one that these people have is fake and he knows it's fake because he touched it a long time ago and it has this type of energy um to it and now it has no energy and they're all like look man we don't know what you're talking about blah 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 so he leaves and he's all like you better tell me or else and frank's kind of like or else what and he's all like look man these people are not playing around they will do to you what they did to me and stuff and he tells them to be careful as he leaves so then um joe's kind of like huh well if the eye doesn't have the power no more where did the power go to well who you think frank so the power of the eye went directly into frank and he's starting to have more flashes and everything and joking uh see something that's wrong with him and it just ends like that so it is intriguing it's kind of like ooh, kind of like what's happening next but my intrigue level isn't really as high as it needs to be only because 
it's 40 minutes long and there's only about 10 minutes worth of interesting stuff the rest is just regular dialogue it's just chat you know being friendly with the new girl it's um frank kissing on callie is biff and joe going at it it's the parents and the guardians like fussing out their kids so that's nice stuff to have don't get me wrong because this is a drama and you need that kind of stuff but i don't need to take up so much i need it to take up a little then get back to the intrigue and action then give me some more drama and then go back to the intrigue and action then give me some more drama and emotion and then you know you see what i'm saying i don't need it to start off really cool for five minutes and then like for 30 it's just kind of like boring dialogue and then the last five is more intriguing type stuff so it does have a bit of a pacing problem but i am kind of curious to see where this is gonna go i still think even with the flaws of nancy drew nancy drew is a whole lot better i still think the nancy drew characters are a whole lot more interesting and more charming than these people sometimes they come off a bit flat and that's kind of sucks because this show is for the most part very serious very dry with a little humor and, and charmness here and there um so when it comes to the characters i'm not really feeling nobody biff is still probably the most interesting person because she's such like um blunt and she's like um so headstrong and she's a little bit mysterious Joe is a really interesting too, only because of how blunt he is and stuff. He's still that from last season, but a bit more because he's older now and stuff. Um, Chat kind of just gets on my nerves. He's just kind of there. Like Chat and Phil, you can literally take them out and it'd be like, whatever. And now Callie's at the point where you can kind of just take her out and it'll be kind of like, whatever too. And now the aunt, you could take her out the show and Biff's mom, and it'll just be like, who cares? You know what I'm saying? Because they're not doing much of anything with them and stuff, especially the aunt, which is really shocking. Alrighty, well, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.